Thanks, Bill. How's it going, Coach? Jamie, good to hear your voice. It's that time of year again. Let's go. Oh, it sure is. I know you missed me. <laughs> Always. So just uh, just kind of getting right into things. Uh, you know, obviously, with we, we've talked in the past about a couple guys moving to tight end, uh, Moon, uh, Cooper Mathers, and then just talking to Coach Whitworth, he also mentioned Jake Bowen. But has there been any other uh, position changes um, of note around either side of the ball? Yeah, we moved uh, Falili Falamui uh, to offensive line. Uh, it just showed tremendous growth, really, since the day he's been here. And I just think his physical build and his size, I, I think, really fits well to what we want to do at, at offensive line, and especially at offensive tackle, giving us an athletic guy with great length that has great passion and understanding for the game and is very physical. So really excited about what uh, he can do, and, and uh, you know, that'll be a really good transition for his future. And uh, boy, coming with some heat right away, some some scoops there. But uh, anyone else uh, moving around besides Falili? No, um, I think that's mainly uh, going to be the position changes right now. And as we kind of go throughout spring, there might be some need based guys moving around. But that's the uh, the big one right now that I'm personally really really excited about. Just in general, you know, obviously there's guys that enter the portal and there's guys that just move on from football too. Uh, have there been any any guys that just uh, have decided to move on from football and leave the program? Obviously, we know about Dallas going into the media side of things, but is there anyone else who falls into that category? Yeah, uh, we're going to put out a, a roster, uh, I believe, tonight, and, and you'll kind of see all, all the changes. There's so many different pieces and, and things that have been moving around that we just want to put that out tonight. And, uh, you know, we'll talk about those guys really as we go forward, but just really excited about the guys that are ready to take the field tomorrow morning. Yeah. Um, obviously, the last time we saw the team, uh, you had Renard and Armani Archie still uh, working back from injuries. Um, what's their status um, for, for spring? And is there anyone else who will at least be on a, a somewhat limited amount of, of snaps just because of injuries? Renard's making great progress. I'm just really happy with where he's at. And, you know, you can see he just has that spark and that energy back in his face being out there running around. Uh, he'll be extremely limited this spring. You know, a guy with plenty of experience that we know what he can do. It's going to be a huge part of our offense. So uh, we're going to kind of work him back in throughout these five weeks and starting in that indie process and then get into some seven on seven. And, you know, he won't be in any live work or anything where it's going to get him to the summer healthy and obviously to fall camp. And he's got the experience to do it. Uh, Arch, uh, the same way. He's, he's getting to that point. He's going to be no contact this spring, but we'll get a chance to do the individual drills and get a chance to do some seven on seven work, but won't be uh, doing contact. And the other one that'll still be progressing back through will be Quinn Roth. So uh, Quinn had an off season deal and, and he's progressing beautifully and he'll be kind of going uh, back into the progression uh, as the spring continues. No, I don't want to, and we've talked in the past about the offensive line and, and obviously you mentioned Falili moving and then, um, you know, that there might be some, some transfers coming in at, at some point down the road, but uh, and I don't want to call it a position of concern, quote unquote, but are there a couple of positions that you're maybe a, a little more attentive to just kind of there being a lot more uncertainty, just to, whether it's departures or whether it's just some youth there? Well, I think concern's the wrong word. You know, I think it's it's something where we're still developing and we're still looking to add. You know, I've I've been excited with kind of how the makeup of the offensive line has come about, uh, and I think there will still be some uh, additions to to that group. But for what we have here right now and what we're we're going to work with throughout the next five weeks, I'm excited about their growth. Uh, and it's not uh, you know fine tuning or over evaluating every little thing that they do. But I want to see every member of that unit, that offensive line unit, take a step forward every day. And that's part of the developmental process. You know, the Christian Hillborns, obviously, Falili, you know, getting Jared and Make comfortable being more at a tackle position. Connor Gomnes has done an amazing job of taking over the offensive line and the calls. So it is just that unit gelling together and taking steps forward every day. Okay, And the most important play in football is the next play. So if we get beat, we're going to get back up. We're going to learn from it, and we're going to keep improving as we go. Because we're we're in a process now, and spring is the best time to master our position, master our craft, master our, our techniques, and that's especially uh, what's going to happen there at offensive line. And I think the other one is running back, you know, to get ourselves in a position 
uh, to establish uh, Nakia and what he can do and to see what young Javinsky is going to bring to the table. I'm excited about what he's ready to do this spring and, you know, just to see how we're going to evolve at that tight end position. Andre Dollar has had an amazing eight weeks. Uh, you know, he should still be in high school, but he's here competing. So just to see where, you know, those positions evolve on the offensive side of the ball, I think is going to be important. But once again, it's about, it's not concern, it's improvement, it's development, it's taking Taking those steps of the natural progression of where our program needs to go. All right, our next question will come from Colton Clark of the Spokes. So go ahead, Colton. Hey, Coach, how's it going? Good, Colton. Uh, you know, you kind of touched on some stuff, but I, I'm wondering what would you like to kind of check off for your own kind of confidence heading into the summer? Like, have you thought of, you know, okay, I'd like to nail down this, this, and this for sure in, in this next month? You know, positionally, mentality, you know, team-wise, what are, that's kind of a broad, broad spectrum there. A little bit, of, a little bit of all of them, I, I guess. Do you have you kind of made kind of a goal chart? I guess is what I'm wondering for yourself. Yeah, I, mean, I think we have some that we kind of presented for the team of like team goals of of what we want to do, and it starts with being a disciplined team, you know. And we define discipline, and I've said this a million times, but what has to be done, when it has to be done, as well as it can be done, and doing it that way all the time. Okay, football is not a sometime thing. It's not a sometime game. It's not when I'm feeling it. It's an all-the-time thing. And our program motto is being your best, okay, and find a way to be 1-0 and on a daily process. Spring ball is the best time ever to be process-driven, right? In that moment, in that play, did you execute? Did you do your job? Now let's go do it again. And everyone's best is different, okay? I'm not a big goal guy, Colton, because that puts ceiling on people. What is each guy's individual best that they can be as a person? And that's going to improve our team. You know, so where I am practice one, I can't be there on the spring game at practice 15. I have to develop. I have to understand. I have to master my craft and my technique. And I've told the coaches every detail. I want to coach hard and aggressive and to the best of our ability. Because what we coach, we see on that tape. We won't accept any excuses. And that's, I think, the power and energy of our coaches and our program. We're excited to be out there. And it's creating a mentality. And it's discipline and it's details. And it's doing the things the right way and where we believe a program should be run. And I think it's our first time to really get our hands on the guys, to really get out there coaching and, and get the new schemes implemented and had a chance to really touch our guys. And that's what spring is great for. And to take another step, I thought we did a great job, eight weeks of building of culture. I think we got a tight team and a team that understands who we need to be and who we want to be. And we're heading in that direction every day. And I think our leadership is emerging. I think that's something as a team, you know, I want to see some of these guys emerge and, emerge when they fail or their teammate doesn't do something right. That's when leadership really shows its head. So those are some of the main team things that, that I really want to get done. And it isn't the offense winning. It isn't the defense winning, right? It's the Cougs taking steps forward as a team because we will always win and lose as a team. So we're going to compete. Iron sharpens iron. We're going to make each other better. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're going to come out of this thing better as a team because of our mentality and who we are, you know, and then, you know, positionally, uh, just touching on a little bit, I, I, you need some surprises. That, that's what great teams do. And I've talked to a lot of guys in our roster, you know, Ryan Peters and Zion Nunley and, you know, a lot of these young guys that they have an opportunity to not surprise us, to, but to slide into major roles. And it is a learning process. There's a growth process. Um, but our depth at wide receiver, obviously our consistency at offensive line, how our tight end position evolves and develops, uh, Cam's and that quarterback room's leadership and how they're handling a quarterback-driven offense is going to be very important. And then defensively, we need to continue to make strides on our defensive front. That's how you become a dominant defense. And to have all those guys back, you know, we're challenging some of those veteran guys more than ever, right? That's how you have growth, and that's how we continue to get better. Uh, I love our linebacking core. I think we're as deep as as we've been. 
Uh, safety will be a huge position to replace really a versatile cornerstones um, in what George and Ice gave us last year. And then obviously, um, you know, Marshett Nickel and, and his continued improvement. So there's a lot of things to be excited about. And then the corner position, who's going to, you know, be able to play out on that island. So there's a lot of things that I'm just really excited about um, as a team positionally and just where we can go because we know who we are and we know where we're going to go. And that's a long form answer, Colton. But at the end of the day, uh, that's kind of where our mindset is heading into tomorrow. Kind of on that a little bit, though, with, with all the new coaches, uh, I guess how much do you see this as an opportunity to uh, to see how all these the, the new guys fit together with, with kind of their coaching styles and, and figuring out how you guys, you know, run things at practice sessions? Do you expect there to yeah. be some trial and error, I guess, there? Well, I would say this. We have spent a long time combing through every detail. Who's spotting the ball? Where's the cameras going to be? So there isn't any of that. We, we don't have time as coaches to trial and error, right? It's our job to be professionals, to make sure everything is smooth and ready to go. And, you know, we had a big uh, kind of all football meeting with the equipment and the strength and the nutritionalists and training to make sure we're as smooth of an operation because every second of this 20 hours that the NCAA gives us is going to be used. And from our standpoint, has to be really, really efficient. You know, so we spent a lot of time being on the getting on the same page and and building relationships, even within the staff and getting to know each other, because, you know, some things that happen is the O&D starts to really compete and just having these guys understand is that we're all in this thing together. But the one thing I love, Colton, is the energy of this coaching staff, you know, and the togetherness. I think that's very important piece of why we brought all these guys in here. And I've just been very happy with how they have gelled, how we have worked together. And I think that's going to show up on the field. These guys respond to energy. And I think that's what we have from Coach Morris on down uh, on the offense and, and Coach Ward on down on the defense. And just excited about how that piece of it has really come together. That sounds great. Thanks so much. All right, next question, Scott Hansen of the Seattle Times. Go ahead, Scott. Hey, Coach, what are you most interested in watching this spring, whether it be a player, position, or coach? Well, I think, you know, right now it's going to be the quarterback position first and foremost. You know, I think we all know, you know, if, you, if you're if not settled in, in that spot and, and commanding that spot, I, I think we, we all know where that needs to go. And I'm excited, you know, that Cam's ready to take that over. And I've seen his leadership blossom and just seeing him in the gray dub today, just hanging out with the guys is just something that's really, really special. But I, I repeat, this is a quarterback driven offense. There's a lot of freedom in that position. He controls a lot of the things that we do. And he is a football smart guy. And just the development of everybody in that room, I think, is going to be vitally important. So it'll always start there first and foremost. Um, but also just our defensive scheme. What I love is it, you just can't say it's the same. You know, what I love about the transition is we brought Brian in. There's all kinds of new ideas, you know, coming from, you know, Coach Brown and his experience at Utah State and obviously the core three of us that have been here and just evolving. If you're not evolving in this game, you're dying. And just excited about the new things that we're going to work on on that side of the ball to take another step. And, uh, you know, that's exciting for me as a coach. And, and we're going to work our tail off to get there. Thank you. Once again, if you have questions, please raise your hand and we will get to you. Next question comes from Dale Grummer of the Lewiston Tribune. Coach, you uh, you were you were kind of definitive there and talking about Cam. How do you how do you uh, plan to split the uh, the reps early on uh, among the QBs? Well, I think in spring ball, that's the beauty of it. You know, you get to slice and dice. We don't have a game next Saturday. and We don't have a game in three weeks. So um, we'll kind of roll, you know, a lot of those guys in. You know, I love Xavier's progression and where he's at. You know, Victor is really picking up on things. And and young Emmett Brown is coming here as an early enrollee and, and really impressed. So it, it won't be something where he's taking 90% of the reps. You know, it'll be uh, blocked off in, in different racks of how we want to do it. He'll get, uh, you know, the majority of them, but we got to develop the whole room. And I think that's an important part of spring ball and everyone's going to get coached. 
And I think that's an important part of this process. And that really starts from me on down. And it's something that I'm really excited about. But that's that's kind of what we've talked about so far, especially these first couple of days. Cam's really familiar with the basics. Now it's just going through the operation of it and making sure, you know, guys are hearing his voice, understanding his cadence, all those type of things. And uh, just just want to check uh, the, the guys that have entered the, the portal in the last few weeks. Um, are, are they all out of the picture in your mind right now? Or, or has, has anyone had a change of heart maybe? No, I, I think we're kind of in the program where once you hit the portal, I mean, we do all of our work on the front end. And, and once that, you know, that situation happens, you know, we, we wish them the best. And, and I don't know where, where they're headed at this point. Thank you, Jake. Yep. Next question comes from Eric Long. Eric, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Um, so last season in Rolovich's first spring game, we saw some interesting stuff like the long snapper duel uh, and then like the water balloons. Do you have any plans for anything like that this season? <laughs> yeah, I would say that's not quite my style. I'm, I'm a little, little, little different in those uh, aspects. And, you know, I hope to get to the point where we can do a true game, you know, and uh, maybe draft sides and, and true two different teams of, of offense and defensive guys. Hopefully we can stay healthy enough to get there. Uh, so that'll be a, a progression as we kind of go throughout this spring. But it'll be more, I, I don't want to use the term normals because we'll do a lot of different events surrounding the game and just more excited to get the fans back in the stadium. And that's an important piece and getting our student body there and, and just having our guys celebrate those 15 practices together, performing in front of some of the best fans in the country.